Screens with color displays can show a wide variety of colors with only three differently colored subpixels. Some people decided to manufacture screens with a fourth subpixel, claiming that this expands the number of colors you can display. <sighs> that irks me. Now, you may be thinking there's no harm done here. You're adding a fourth pixel, a new color. Of course that will increase the range of possible color combinations. Unfortunately, your human eyes cannot tell the difference. Let's start off simple. Light comes in different flavors. You have cells in the back of your eyes that can taste three distinct flavors of light. If you're part of the majority, of course. These are sometimes known as your red, green, and blue photoreceptors, because they respectively respond to reddish, greenish, and bluish light. Now how does this simple three-sensor system let you experience all the colors you can actually see? Your brain interprets them. When actual monochromatic yellow light reaches your eye, your red and green receptors react, because your red receptors think this light is slightly reddish, and your green receptors think this light is slightly greenish. These signals are sent to your brain, and you see this. Back in the glory days when you were still learning all the simple things, others around you told you that this color is called yellow, and you've been calling this sensation yellow ever since. But your screen cannot emit monochromatic yellow light. How are you seeing this yellow circle right now? Well, it's done by turning on the red and green subpixels, which stimulate your red and green receptors, which, like before, causes you to see this. To your eyes and brain, this is just as much yellow as this is, because they each cause the exact same sensation, a sensation that you call yellow. And this can be done with any color you can see. All your eyes know is three flavors of light. Three subpixels are all that is necessary to produce these colors, including yellow. There is no need to invest in a fourth subpixel. But let's give these guys the benefit of the doubt. After all, this is a very simplified bottle of color. Maybe adding a yellow pixel does add more possibilities. We need a more thorough model of color vision. Here is the visible spectrum, showing all monochromatic wavelengths of visible light. Your blue receptors react around these wavelengths, reacting strongest at the wavelength that humans call blue. Your green receptors react around these wavelengths, reacting the strongest at the wavelength humans call green. Finally, your red receptors react around these wavelengths, reacting the strongest at the wavelength humans call yellow. Yeah, don't think about it too much. So this is a nice diagram, but it only shows monochromatic colors, colors of only one wavelength of light. We need to illustrate colors like white and purple. We need a little something more. This is the trilinear mixing triangle. Our job is to fill this triangle with colors based on what proportion of the total stimulus comes from each color receptor in your eyes. The more the light makes your red receptor react compared to the others, the closer it is placed to this point. The same goes for green and blue. Let's try to plot all possible colors. Keep in mind that your screen isn't perfect, so it cannot accurately display some of these colors. This is just for conceptualization. Let's start with the spectrum we saw earlier. Red reacts the strongest at lower frequencies. Green slowly takes more and more of the total stimulus as we move to higher frequencies. Then, blue takes over at the highest ones. This is how your eyes react to all monochromatic colors. Now that we have moved them from a one-dimensional spectrum to our two-dimensional triangle, we can illustrate how you can mix them together to create even more colors. Ignoring differences in total brightness, these are all possible colors. Notice that there is still unfilled space. Don't worry, these are impossibilities anyway. Think about it. When you stimulate your green receptors, your red ones will always automatically react to a certain degree too. Your color receptors are not entirely independent of each other. There are just certain proportions of flavors of light that cannot physically happen in your eyes. Therefore, there are gaps in our diagram. By the way, this full representation of all colors with brightness held constant is called a chromacity diagram. Now that we can see all possible colors, let's look for the ones which the subpixels on your screen show. They should be around here, here, and here. Mixing them together, your screen can produce any color enclosed in this triangle. Now, where could we add a fourth pixel to increase this range in the yellow area? Look, there actually is a little more room for improvement. But even so, you're not honestly gaining that much. And besides, there would need to be video formats out there that can actually take advantage of this new pixel if we want to see these new colors at all. Pretty much all video is encoded to tell red, green, and blue subpixels what to do. What is this yellow subpixel supposed to do if there's no information for it? Of course, you could internally process the video to artificially increase the range of colors and make the yellow pixel useful, but you'd just be manipulating the information that the video already has. There's nothing new. 
So, it turns out that displays with four colors could potentially show more colors than conventional displays, but only if that fourth pixel is carefully set outside the conventional range of colors and there is a video source that actually uses it. The problem is, there aren't really that many more yellow colors to cover, and there does not exist any source material with information for a fourth color anyway. When considering your next TV or monitor, displays with three colors versus four colors should not impact your decision.